Welcome, crypto fam, to the number one daily Bitcoin pod. In today's show, I'll be sharing the latest Bitcoin technical analysis as we are pumping back in the green. Also, breaking news from Peter Schiff saying, I don't think Bitcoin has any real value at all. We'll also be discussing Bitcoin mining difficulties set yet a new high pre having Let's freaking go. As well as 90% of the Bitcoin ETF inflows are still retail, according to the Van Eck CEO. Also, Uniswap price tanks 10% as the team vows to fight the recent SEC threat, including the Wells notice, which is typically before a lawsuit. We'll also be discussing Bitcoin to 250000 per coin this year in 2024, according to the billionaire venture capitalist Tim Draper. Also, Bitcoin bulls unite. Kathy Wood's 2.3 million forecast gains support from an None other than a rich dad, Robert Kiyosaki. I'll be breaking that down for you. We'll also be taking a look at the overall crypto market. All this, plus much more bullishness here in today's show. Now, welcome everyone just joining the stream. Good afternoon. It's April 11th, a fantastic day. Bitcoin up 700 bucks. We're trading back above 70,500. We have a halving looming in roughly one week. Shout out to everyone in that chat. Mr. Bone Daddy says JV is live and pumped up. Church is in session. That's right. Shout out Don George. Let's see those paws in the air from the Nippinator. You already know. Cheers, fam. Shout out Devon. Good to see you. Hoddle, hoddle. Now pump it up. Let's go. Juan Espino. Welcome. Good afternoon, all. Peter Schiff has no value. There you go. And it was actually quite a hilarious little uh, segment. For 13 minutes, just straight bashing Bitcoin. He's like, I'd rather have those baseball cards than the Bitcoin. Bitcoin has no value at all. Uh, McFootnator. Welcome. Hoddle Michael. Welcome. One week, a thousand plus. Peter, damn straight, easy peasy. Let's do this, Bitcoin, pump it up. Welcome, Tube. Let's get it, loud and clear, Bone Daddy, thank you. DNA Noonan, hey, JV, I'm here making onion rings for a w in the Mill Bay, BC, and watching the greatest show on YouTube. Love you, brother. Respect, uh, DNA. I appreciate you tuned in there. Smash the like. Yes, please. Thank you, Jerome Smith. Uh, Julie Key Largo in the building. Welcome, welcome, Mars. Pepe is pumping, says, yeah, yeah. Peter Schiff is still mumbling BS when Bitcoin, yes, when Bitcoin's 500 million per coin, more than likely. I watched that. It was hysterical. He looked like an arse. Pretty much, Julie Key Largo. We all know that. Mr. Schiffinator. What up, Len S? Send him your Beanie Babies too. Right. If you need to sell your Beanie Babies. And you know what's interesting? They even asked him, like, uh, Patrick Bet David's like, how much of your portfolio is actually in gold? And then he kind of diverged the question and said, well, more than half of my portfolio is in gold stocks. That means he doesn't even primarily hold the precious metal he pumps. I find that hilarious. Uh, Mateus, uh, greatly appreciate you gifting a membership. It looks like Jerome Smith, you have just been hooked up. That's right. Craig the Space Bum. We officially live it in the flesh. Let's get it. Uh, Dave, yeah, yeah, yeah. Hi from Bangkok. Uh, welcome, Jerry Reynolds. Shout out Bangkok, Thailand in the building. That's what I love about the stream. Our audience is from all over the world. Literally, that's what's up. Pump the likes, family, to help pump the stream and let me know where you're tuned in from. It helps out tremendously, family. Shout out, Greg. Uh, have a good day to you as well. And everyone just joining the stream this afternoon. Exciting times in crypto. Shout out, Lox Guy. What it do, bro? Uh, shout out, the Palestinian. Yes, we're live. You already know. Pump that mofo up. Welcome. Okay, good. I'm back to the kombucha. Let's go. Have a good day to you as well, family. I appreciate y'all for tuned in. Thanks for the hearts. Thanks for the likes. We're going to have another epic day here on the pod. Shout out Larry Hawaii in the building. Uh, the recent AU pump. May have something to do with us. Gold ETS were opened up to Hong Kong exchanges a few months ago. Oh, that's interesting, Greg. And as we covered in yesterday's pod, we do have Hong Kong ETFs likely to start launching next week. So this is going to be a big week uh, heading into the having family. Good evening, Mark. Uh, good GN. What is that? Good, good evening from Germany. Good evening, family. Shout out Germany. Virginia in the building. 200 likes for JV. 
0.5 hour in the next membership we'll send. Wow, Mateus is giving y'all a challenge. If we can get 200 likes, he's gonna send another gifted membership. So get the likes up. Come on, guys. 70,000, let's freaking go. Shout out Larry Yo, hooking it up with the super. Greatly appreciate that, family. Helps out tremendously. Thank you. Darth Melda, it's been eons since I've seen you. Whoa. Pump it up for Darth Melda, please. I missed you as well. Where you been? Hopefully all has been good. You got to update me. Bram, uh, thanks for subbing to the pod family. Jackie Tucker in the building. Pump it up to 77 Gs now we're talking. Let's get it. CNA all the way every day. Pump it up. Cheers, Mark Anderson. Appreciate it. Hit the thumbs up to get the gifted membership. That's right. Simple as that, family. Look, pump it up if your game went long. Yeah. When the dip hit, you just stay like King Kong. Hey. Let's go. You already know. But anyways, fam, if you're new to the channel, very important to smash the subscribe button to receive daily premium crypto news alerts every day, just like this. Also equally important to smash that thumbs up button because when you like the video, it helps out tremendously with the YouTube algorithm, helps get more eyeballs on the channel, and it's always greatly appreciated. Today is pod episode number 1606. I'm your host, JV, and it's April 11th, 2024. The market is a-pumping, as we can see here on Coin360, Bitcoin trading back above $70,600 back in the green. We also have ton up 8%, while Ethereum's pulling back and Solana and Cardano are pumping and in the green. And checking out CoinMarketCap.com, the current crypto market cap sits at $2.61 trillion with roughly $84 billion in volume for the past 24 hours. We got the Bitcoin dominance on the climb at 53%. Ether dominance on the decline at 16.1%. My question for y'all in the chat, how high do you feel this Bitcoin dominance is likely to climb for this cycle? Do you think we tap 60, 70, potentially 80%? Love to know your thoughts. And checking out the top 100 crypto gainers for the past 24 hours, we got Tao leading the pack up 12.5%, followed by NEO, the one, trading, uh, or I should say, up almost 10% of the day, as, as well as TonCoin up 8%. Below that, Jasmine Pepe, EOS, VET, and BGB. Now, which altcoins, if any, are you guys most bullish on for this particular bull run? Holla. And checking out the crypto bubbles to get a visual perspective on the day. We have, safe to say, I'd say 70% of the alts are correcting in, in the red, but we do got a handful of gainers. And zooming out on the monthly... Very similar. I'd say maybe 60% in the red, 40% in the green, with some respectable gainers. Core, 200%. Pendle, 131%. Ton, 100%. And Whiff, 85%. And checking out the Crypto Green and Fair Index. Uh, we're rated a 76 on the day. Extreme Greed. Yesterday, 78. Last week, a 70. And last month, an 81 in Extreme Greed. We keep an eye on this because the higher this number goes, the more likely of a correction. But anyways, checking out the Bitcoin halving countdown. All eyes on Bitcoin halving 2024. Roughly eight days, eight hours away with the estimated halving date scheduled for April 20th. Can you say... 420 at 458 UTC, but just note, this is all dependent upon the block height. And it's exactly when we hit 840,000, we're going to see a halving. So this recalibrates virtually every moment. And the current block we're on is 838,786, as displayed here on the time chain calendar. And currently, you can trade $1 for 1419 Satoshis. And we got the Bitcoin market cap sitting at $1.39 trilly. Let's go. But there you have it, fam. Let me know where you feel. The Bitcoin price action is likely to take us leading into the halving in approximately one week. Yo. That's right, 420, yo. Pump it up with JV, 71,000. Let's go. Bitcoin Aussie, welcome, says 188,000 in 2025. Send that, please. I think 60% is good. The alts are always going to catch some of the Bitcoin win. Pretty much, as I say, a rising tide rises all ships. All you altcoiners focused on alts, you guys should be praising Bitcoin because without the king, your gains don't exist. Just saying, you demand JV been stacking since 2013. Oh, for real. Whoa, another Bitcoin OG in the building. Yes, sir. Congrats. I salute you. 
2013 hodler. Boom. Let's go. Hi, everyone. JV, my man. My man. Shout out, independent, free soul. Respect. Hi, Deeth. What it do? Welcome to the stream, family. Welcome everyone just joining us. Uh, Bitcoin dominance chart, 0.5 Fibonacci at 59%. Boom, shakalaka. Bitcoin dominance, by the way, 59 to 66% post having. I dig it. Are you doing a live stream for the CNA having party? Um, no, I don't have a. I don't have a. I don't have any plan of doing a having party. But we will be doing a stream on the day of the having because I stream every day. So yeah, why not? We'll call it a party. Yes, we're having a uh, Bitcoin having party on the day of the having, whether it's on the 19th or the 20th. And we'll even have a party the day after, the day before, and every other day this year. How about that? How about every live stream we consider a party? There you go. Pump watch, pump party, whatever you want to call it. But yeah, man, it's going to be pretty lit and I will be streaming here. So it's going to be fun. Put in an order to get the Bitcoin at 65,000 inside of the crypto IRA. FOMO is killing me. Wondering if it's going to dip back. Now, breaking news outside of crypto. OJ Simpson has been announced dead. Whoa. Yes. OJ Simpson from the infamous Bronco Chase back in the day in California A is announced dead allegedly from some sort of cancer. But what's interesting, he did get a JAB back in 2001, I mean, sorry, 2021, and tried convincing everyone else to do the same. And some would say that speeds up the big C. I'll leave it at that, we're on the tube, but let me know your thoughts. Party every day, sounds like my daily thing. That's what's up, K-Jam. Bring the having and let's take it all to the time highs, JB. Shout out Shatan Patel. Um, no, I don't think there's any deathbed confession, guys, that I'm aware of. I saw some, you know I mean, some FUD, like, but I don't think none of it was true. I'm so OG, I bought my doge from Big Vern, like Big Perm from Friday, Big Vern. Nipsey will get the Bitcoin hat, Craig. Too many strange deaths recently, JV. This is fact. Grant says, I agree. Brought to you by Exactamondo, the largest advertiser on the tube. You already know. I am headed to Puerto Rico right now. That's what's up. Anthony Zamet, what you heading here for? And what part of the island? Holla. Let me know. That's cool. PR is the place to be. OJ on an island with Diddy. Oh, boy. Oh, boy. The Palestinian word. JV, do you just trade Bitcoin? Honestly, Mark, I'm not a trader. I'm not going to pretend to be one. Um, I am a hodler. Simple strategy. It's worked out tremendously for me. And that means I just buy Bitcoin, stack sats, and hodl. And I've been doing so since Bitcoin was 1500 in 2017. It's been working out quite well. So... Uh, operation, yes, exactly, precisely. Was OJ hanging with Diddy? He searched every golf course for the killer. Now he will face the true judgment as we will. Amen to that, Tennessee. Amen to that. No traitor, no cheater. Oh, Mayaguez. I'm not even sure exactly where that city is, but that's what's up. What's bringing you here? That drum roll. Yeah, this is a new drum roll. This is actually really a rim shot, but sounds like a drum roll. Jerome, what do you think will happen? Greetings, everyone. Shout out Lisa Brault. Uh, good to see you, Lisa. Winning here all day, every day. Bitcoiners are winners. You already know. You know what I mean? Let's go. More than five sets in your stack, then get it on. Yeah. Had the people on my back to get a song. Red broke, have a talk, we smoked them like a bomb. Boom. You already know. But anyways, fam, keep the comments a-flowing. Always appreciated. But let's dive into today's Bitcoin TA. Check out some of the charts or where the price action is likely to take us next. Here, we're looking at the one-hour chart. Bitcoin refused to give up 70 Gs. Support into the April 11th Wall Street Open as fresh U.S. macro data boosted the mood. Data from TradingView showed seesawing Bitcoin price action with the bulls holding gains from the day prior. The March print of the PPI delivered a boost to risk asset sentiment coming in below expectations at 0.2%. 
month on month. This served to partially counteract the previous CPI overshoot, ultimately providing a mixed picture of inflationary forces. And overall, markets were expecting to wait longer than previously thought for the Federal Reserve to lower their interest rates. Now, after yesterday's hot inflation data, I'm honestly not sure how much today's reports matter. Markets are baking in higher for longer, according to Keith Allen from Material Indicators. Allen, as well as others, focus on the upcoming block subsidy halving and current Bitcoin price structures as more important focuses moving forward. Uh, quoting him here, the bullish case for Bitcoin is building around a series of higher lows. The bearish case is centered around the fact that the bulls haven't been able to validate the RS flip at the trend line, 69 or the 21 day moving average. Allen added that 69,000 remained the most critical level to watch. Now an accompanying video included a chart of Bitcoin's order book liquidity on the largest global exchange, Binance. This showed sellers in weight near 73,000 along with strengthening bid support near 67 G's. Now, market observers, meanwhile, drew optimism from the landscape on the exchanges with funding rates staying low despite the recent upside uh, price. Now, quoting Look into Bitcoin founder Philip Swift, uh, Bitcoin funding rates finally look healthy for the first time since Bitcoin climbed above 70,000. Bitcoin needed this choppy consolidation to clear out the DGENs trying to go leverage long, encouraging sign for the bulls. And Dan Crypto Trade suggested that the traders were now hesitant to long Bitcoin due to successive rejections near the all time highs. Quoting them here 71, 000, I'm sorry, 71,500, important to break and hold above. Then those all time highs should only be a matter of time. Let me know if you agree or disagree with this market analysis. And now, uh, this was a video. Uh, Peter Schiff was the guest on the Valuetainment pod with Patrick Bet David. And Peter Schiff basically bashed Bitcoin for 13 minutes. Very, very interesting. I encourage you to check it out. It got a lot of love here on X when I posted it last night at 10.56 p.m. Already got 500 hearts, uh, 80 retweets, 139 bookmarks. But here are some of the quotes from Peter Schiff. I don't think Bitcoin has any real value at all. I think it is just a speculative mania. Ultimately, I think MicroStrategy goes bankrupt. I think eventually Bitcoin is going to crash and the creditors are going to end up with the company. Now, it's interesting. And the reason he talks about MicroStrategy, he is pretty much asked about you know how he truly feels about all this. And another thing uh, Patrick Bet David asked him, which I found interesting, he said, so what's your portfolio look like, Peter? Uh, what are you holding? And he said, more than 50% of my portfolio is gold stocks. Now, I find that interesting. That means more than half of his portfolio, he doesn't even hold the precious metal in which he goes around the world pumping, right? While he bashes Bitcoin, he actually has gold stocks and he didn't answer and finish the rest of his portfolio. He just said, more than 50% of my portfolio is gold stocks, meaning less than 50% of your portfolio is actually gold. But when he started off the pod here, Patrick Bet David, he had some half million dollar like baseball cards, like Babe Ruth. And then he had, you know, a bar of gold. And then he said, what would you prefer? You know, the gold, a million in gold, the baseball cards or Bitcoin. And Peter Schiff ultimately said, Said, well, I take everything over Bitcoin because Bitcoin has no value. And he went on with his rant. But let me know your thoughts on that. And let me know if you got a chance to watch this episode of the pod. Is a 13 minute vid on here that I shared on X. I'll let you boy and let me know. And now let's make fun of, fun of Peter Schiff here in the comments, shall we? <laughs> he buys paper gold. Exactly. The guy buys paper gold. Well said, uh, Doggle Trump. Peter Schiff's arguments are about the token, not the Bitcoin network. That's right. And he also says, I could tokenize my gold. Uh, you know, uh, 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 I could tokenize my gold. Uh. So he it was actually quite funny. Bash in Bitcoin for 13 minutes. I smoke on the 13th letters of the alphabet. <laughs> the stocks he has are non-USA. Oh, and that's another thing. And uh, Patrick by David asked him, why are your stocks non-USA? And then he was sharing why he doesn't like U.S. stocks. I find that interesting as well. Homeboy sound broke. Precisely. It did sound kind of broke. You know what I mean, Mateus, 269 online, only 29 likes. We got to refresh the screen. There's no way we only have 29 likes, but yeah, let's get the likes up, family. I appreciate it. Yeah, Peter was actually on Valuetainment. We need a drum roll for that one. Gold stocks. Yeah, international gold stocks, non-USA. 
So Schiff loves boomer rocks. <laughs> Guys, please give more likes to JV. He is not a voluntarily voluntary guy. It is difficult to find better on earth. Please not be Scott's. Ha ha ha. I appreciate it, bro. Gold has been tokenized through several services already. Exactly. What's poppin' dangness? Good to see you, family. Crypto today. Welcome, welcome. Peter Schiff is certainly lying to keep the Bitcoin price low. He is not that dumb. You just never know. Uh, JV, did you get a chance to watch the Brian Armstrong interview with the Hoover Institution? I have not seen that yet. Uh, I haven't seen it yet. Thanks for the reminder. You already know, Jerome, those who stack <laughs> the stats on side, Peter. Yeah, Peter's last chance. Peter Schiff is valuable, plays out the balance. Mother Nature express the third law. Hmm. Peter knows Bitcoin is going to eat gold's lunch and feels threatened by it. I mean, the guy that probably doesn't even hold any gold. <laughs> yeah, I mean, when he was asked, he didn't mention holding any gold. He prefers the paper thing, the international paper thing. When Michael Saylor song, uh, give me a second here. You guys want the Saylor song? You got it. But like most of the people who are buying assets at some point want to sell the assets out of profit. Not these folks. People, people, people. Who use gold as a store of value. What do we call them, folks? That use, that, use, that use fiat, 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 fiat or gold fiat, currency, currency as a store as a of store, value. Store, store, store value. What do we call those folks besides Peter Shifty? We call them poor. We call them poor. Whoa. I called Shift's company Euro Pacific once and their fees were very steep. I said, no, thank you. He will have some Bitcoin hidden away. Or is the Mr. 100? Well, according to Max, uh, Max says this Mr. 100 country that has been accumulating Bitcoin like there's no tomorrow is more than likely going to be like Abu Dhabi, which is the UAE, Abu Dhabi being the, the, the city there. Or it could be Qatar, uh, you know, big money there in the Middle East. Every Demo Democrat is told not to acknowledge poor 200 likes in 10 minutes, and I'll send the next membership for free. For JV, it is the real second asset after BTC. Much appreciated, Mateus. So that means family. If you're in here now, all I got to do is pump the like. If you pump the like and we hit the next uh, 200 likes, uh, you're going to get a free membership. So take advantage of it. Rock Collectors, where you at? That's what's up. Peter Schiff must be related to Adam Schiff. I don't know who Adam Schiff is. Hey, y'all loving the news. Thank you, Creeper. Gold is at an all-time high. Yeah, but still not exciting. Is, is any gold hodler like celebrating right now gold all-time highs? I don't know. The live stream's nuts. It's like a news reel and party. Love it. Glad I wandered in here. Thank you, uh, use the main. You can't transfer gold across the borders. Yeah, that was one of the arguments they shared against Schiff. And he's like, well, I can do everything the Bitcoin can do. He's like, I can tokenize the gold with another coin. You don't need Bitcoin, his argument was. Bitcoin is just a, a Ponzi, is what he says. And it's eventually going to collapse and go to zero. And the MicroStrategy shareholders will take over the company. That was his synopsis, ultimately. Meanwhile, yes, Bitcoin's pumping. We're about to recapture 71,000. So pump the likes to pump the stream. Thought I had 100 bitties and an old account. Turns out it was only 100 bits, which is one cent worth of a Bitcoin. Thought I had $7 million. Turns out it was seven bucks. Ouch. <laughs> Schiff should take advice from his son. That's right. Pump the likes. Didn't gold take something like 30 years to 4X? Probably. I just know 10 years ago it was like 2,000, and now we're like 2,300. Gold bugs are like, oh, my God. Government can take your gold. Facts. Tell them, man. Real talk right there. That's a real concern. Oh, yeah, we heard Kramer report that. Whoop, whoop. See why? Miss my JV fix. Howdy, fam. All the way to 85 Gs, baby. In three weeks, send it. The only tulip Ponzi scheme is fiat. Tell them dankness. I remember my husband bought gold 10 years ago and got taken down. Whoa. What do you mean by got taken down? Someone took him out, took him down. Bitcoin is getting ready to crash all the way up to 100 Gs. Exactly. Gold is not as rare as Bitcoin. Yeah, gold is really not that rare. There's infinite gold in the earth, in the water. 
right? They say the earth is mostly water. Well, how much gold do you think is buried in that ocean? You know I mean, next to the extraterrestrials and stuff like that, you never know, I'm just saying. <laughs> what is 2% over 10 years? Nothing, there you go. Orange party night in this piece. Oh, orange panty night, don't get me started. Yes, we are going to have an orange panty night tonight, folks. This is dedicated to all the whole coiners. It's red panty night when you sign to fight me, yeah? Back at your back at home with your wife. Mmm. <laughs> One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. It's the ten says commandments. Uh. But anyways, fam, let's dive into our next story of the day. Let's discuss the latest with this Bitcoin mining difficulty, setting a new high, pre-having, another great sign. Bitcoin mining difficulty experienced another adjustment for the Bitcoin having, hitting a new all-time high of 86.4 trillion, according to data from BTC.com. The latest adjustment occurred April 10th, which was yesterday, increasing the Bitcoin mining difficulty by 3.4% from the previous difficulty level of 83 trillion, which was set on March 28th. The difficulty of mining Bitcoin continues to grow ahead of the historic halving event, which is poised to cut minor rewards by 50%. The latest Bitcoin mining difficulty adjustment is likely the last one before the halving. Now, according to BTC.com, the next Bitcoin mining difficulty adjustment will occur in 13 days, which is April 24th, which will be roughly four to five days after the halving. So in the meantime, the Bitcoin halving expected to occur in roughly seven or eight days, maybe the 19th, maybe the 20th. I just hope it's 420 just for the sake of saying, hey, we had a halving on 420. That'd be pretty lit. Pun intended. Bitcoin mining difficulty measures how hard and time consuming it is to mine a new block or solve mathematical puzzles. Under Bitcoin's proof of work consensus, Bitcoin mining difficulty adjustment occurs every 2016 blocks or approximately every two weeks as Bitcoin is programmed to self adjust the difficulty level to maintain a target block time of 10 minutes. The mining difficulty directly depends upon the Bitcoin blockchain hash rate, a unit measuring miners computational power to produce new BTC. Now in line with the increasing Bitcoin mining difficulty, the Bitcoin hash rate has seen a significant rise recently, surging from around 619 exahashes per second on March 28th to 696 exahashes per second April 10th. And according to data from BitInfo charts, the hash rate of Bitcoin reached an all-time high of 727.9 exahashes per second on March 24th. Some analysts predict that the Bitcoin hash rate will likely drop after the upcoming halving event 2024. And according to Galaxy Mining Analysts, as much as 20% of the Bitcoin current hash rate could go offline after the Bitcoin halving, as many miners will likely turn off their mining rigs due to the lowered efficiency. Now, the analyst said that more than 70% of the Bitcoin hash rate was churned out by eight ASIC miner models by the end of 2023. So there you have it. I think just another massively bullish uh, factor in the ecosystem when we get new, you know, adjustments for the mining difficulty and the hash rate keeps breaking out, reaching new all-time highs. It's just a sign of the time. Bitcoin price tends to follow the hash rate. It's a lagging indicator. Uh, still mining Caspa. This will blow up, says Goldberry89. Anyone here actually mining Bitcoin? I'm curious. Uh, let me know, chat. 420 would be lit. Amen to that, Devon. Well, well, well. You know what time it is. What time is it, fam? Woo. We back, baby. We are back, by the way. Gold is an indicator for inflation, so currently 10% inflation. There you go. Bitcoin, shit coins, or NFTs. There's no greater feeling than hitting that. That sweet, sweet. Sweet, sweet. Old time high, old time high, old time high in this bitch. Rush it pump to the sky. We just buy and get yeah. rich. Bitcoin even 500,000. Imagine the price of the alts. Like, Whoa, some alts will be zero and other alts will be killing it. Fact. All time high in this piece. 420 on 420, 2024. <laughs> Whose coma is this? One House Productions. That's right. Be prepared. We're only a week away. Family, hit the dispensary if you have to. Get ready. The Bitcoin miners have had four years to prepare for the having Exactly. I don't think a lot of the miners are going to switch off their machines either. Uh, All-time high in this. What? Tell them. Uh, how many Bitcoin does the U.S. government own due to confiscation? That's an excellent question, Andy. Does anyone have an answer? It's got to be hundreds of thousands. It'll 
uh, if we will not collect 200 likes, that means 51 more are on my offer for the free membership is not valid, guys. Please be more active. JV gives the news. We can give him the likes. Thank you, Matea. So he's ultimately saying we get 50 more likes. He's going to gift another membership. That means somebody is going to get blessed and hooked up with a free, F-R-E-E, free 99 membership to the micro strategy uh, level here, the channel. So you guys hook it up. Smash the likes. It's free to do so, fam. I think the alts could crash. Well, of course, that you got to keep in mind there's a million alts now. I don't know the exact number, but there's literally millions. And look at Nipsey's juxtaposition right now. Whoa, I think this is the sign we've been looking for, family. If you analyze it, I know it's a little blurry. The focus is on me. But if you look at Nipsey just zoning out right there with the four paws in the air, that's a sign. Now, if he stretches those paws out, like very stiff, like that's what we're looking for. I just want to throw that out there. Uh, Nick, I hope so. Then we'll wait for 89 G's. The current price, the DOJ holds 8 billion in Bitcoin among other coins. So yeah, that's how they prefer to uh, be hodlers of Bitcoin. They just confiscate it. Yeah, look, he's, he's doing the stretch. There we go, baby. Nipsey's indicators, all the four paws up and they stay there. Yeah, man. Oh, time high, oh, time high, oh, time high in this yeah, bitch. Yeah, Watch yeah. it pump, pump, baby. We uh, just buy and get rich. Get yeah. right back. We Nipsey is sweet. I have sweet Boston Terrier. Oh, nice. Love me some dogs. We'll be pumping up. Thank you, Nipsey. Bye, bye, bye. Nip Soshi. <laughs> Nip Soshi. Any trade? Anyways, fam, keep the comments flowing. Let's dive into our next story of the day. Keep an eye on Nipsey, by the way. Let's discuss the ETF inflows. Headline reads, 90% of the Bitcoin ETF inflows are still retail, according to the Van X CEO. Does that mean the institutional FOMO hasn't even began? What? Anyways, Bitcoin ETFs have attracted significant amounts of capital 2024, but traditional banks and institutional investments have yet to enter the fray. Speaking exclusively uh, to Cointelegraph at the Paris Blockchain Week, Van X CEO Jan Van Eck said the retail sector has primarily been responsible for the inflows into the spot ETFs in the U.S. Van Eck said that the initial success of the ETFs, which have on some days seen billions of dollars worth of inflows since their launch, which the official launch, ironic enough, was exactly three months ago on January 11th. Today is April 11th. Now, they said he's, it surpassed his expectations. He believes the inflows have not come from significant investments from traditional trade fi players. That's right. Quoting him here, I was surprised, but I don't think it's traditional investors yet. I still think 90% of the flows are retail. You've had some Bitcoin whales and some other institutions move some assets in, but they were already exposed to Bitcoin. And here's a uh, photo of him speaking at the Paris Blockchain Week uh, sharing that. The CEO of the investment management firm added that no U.S. banks have officially approved or allowed their financial advisors to recommend Bitcoin to date. Van Eck said that the next month could see the arrival of some major institutional investments from the banks and traditional firms, but that the Bitcoin ETF landscape was still in its infancy. That's right. Quoting him here, there's a lot of maturation to happen. A lot of technology will be developed on chain. So there is a long way to go. And also he was asked why investors would prefer to invest in a Bitcoin ETF over directly buying and managing the Bitcoin themselves. For example, self-custody. Van Eck said convenience was a major reason as investors look to fund managers to handle their entire portfolios. Quoting them again, convenience, safety, and affordability. You had 2% spreads on many centralized exchange platforms like Coinbase. We have single digit spreads for the ETFs and no fees or low fees. It is easier just to do a buy ticket than anything else. Now, I disagree. I think the easiest, most convenient, safe, and affordable way to do it is self-custody for obvious reasons, uh, but you also need to learn the basics of securing uh, your wallets with self-custody. But it is very simple. In my opinion, a nine-year-old can do it very successfully, right? So it means any age uh, can do the same thing, but some people just trust others to hold the Bitcoin for them. But there's also downside. There's risk associated with them holding your biddies. Number one, not your keys, not your coins. If you don't hold the Bitcoin and control the private key, you don't really own the Bitcoin. And yes, it can be confiscated. All Bitcoin ETF BTC can be conf confiscated. So something to keep in mind. Now, Van Eck was founded in 1955 by John Van Eck, who would make his name by uh, starting the first gold fund in the US. Interesting. In 1968, when gold was fixed, 
against the dollar. Van Eck said his father's fund boomed as inflation soared in the 1970s. Van Eck said his tendency to be a paranoid business person, maybe he smokes the reefer, has kept him alert. (laughs) <laughs> Taney emergent assets that could contend with gold. Quoting him again, in 2017, we said Bitcoin will not replace gold, but it will significantly complement and people's portfolios. Van Eck said his uh, firm's big picture approach is investing, driven by understanding that political, economic, and technological trends will drive financial markets up until the 2010s. There has not been a lot of emergent asset until Bitcoin rose to prominence. Hmm. Now, quoting him here, I started looking at Bitcoin. I am not the super in love with it or anything. I just think that at times you really want to have a store value in your portfolio. And that's what I care about. People's investment savings. The CEO added that there's an argument for Bitcoin being a better store value than gold in contemporary times. He also said that the U.S. has a big budget deficit problem and that it must tackle in the coming years and that the market movements are reflecting anticipation of this reality. And while much has been made of the impact of the Bitcoin ETFs, the price appreciation of Bitcoin in 2024, Van Eck said their impact might be overstated, quoting him here. What I'd like to point out is that it is not the most earth-shattering thing. The Bitcoin market is more global and much deeper than just being influenced by the ETFs. Now, Van Eck pointed to a sharp rise of the price in early April that did not occur during the U.S. trading hours, which is indicative of the influence of Asian markets. So there you have it. Let me know your thoughts on that, whatever feedback you may have. How at your boy. And do you agree that most of the ETF inflows thus far have been retail and not institution? Because if so, and we get the massive institutional adoption preceding the halving, that's a pretty big deal for Bitcoin. Let's get it. People I've taught about Bitcoin asked me if I can manage their portfolios. I told them it's against the point. Exactly, McFootnator. Smashed it so hard for you. I appreciate that. If you invest how much you can lose, then not emotion, but mind driving your profits. Yeah, they say scared money don't make money. So only invest what you can afford to lose as an investor is, I think, a good rule 101. You know what I mean? Show JV, Bitcoin, and the fam some love and respect. Uh, like and comment. Thank you, Molly. Respect, family. Greatly appreciate that. That's very kind of you. Welcome to the stream. Always a pleasure to see you. Wrench Whisperer. Good to see you as well. I was the 100th like, says Lisa. That's what's up. Appreciate that. China starts ETFs next week. That's right. Uh, Hong Kong is rolling them out, as we covered, I think, in yesterday's pod. Asian persuasion. You already know. The Asian markets are massive. We don't say indicative. We say dicative. Well, thank you there, Tony. ETF and retail. Never. And South Korea is about to buy Bitcoin as well. We not achieved 200 likes, but memberships will be send, get next time, and be grateful for G. Well, he stuck to his word, Matthias. 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 I'm sorry if I'm pronouncing the name wrong. Just gifted another membership. So thank you guys. And shout out to Billy uh, for hooking it up. Not hooking it up. Thanks, Mateus, for hooking it up. But Billy got blessed, so we appreciate you. Thanks to all the members of the channel. JV, check out the Michael J. White interview about Tyson versus Jake. He said Jake is going to sleep. Well, I think we would all like to see Jake go to sleep. So if so, uh, kudos to that. I'll be tuned in. I'll also be tuned in to Ryan Garcia versus uh, Devin Haney next week on 420. Uh, That's going to be a banger. And of course, uh, this Saturday, UFC big fights. I'm looking forward to Gaethje versus Holloway. And then Piera, uh, Alex Pereira is fighting uh, the dude that, I uh, forget the name, uh, Jamal, Jamal Hill. So that's going to be a, a good one too. I don't have a college fund for my kids. I have a Bitcoin fund for them. Smart, 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 smart. Let's go. Uh, yeah, what's the second best coin? You really going to ask me that? Which one's the best crypto asset? Well, Bitcoin's the best crypto asset. Okay. What's the second best? There is no second best. I'm not saying I'm number one. Uh, I'm sorry, I lied. I'm number one, two, three, four, and five. Facts. JV, what do you think XRP is going to go parabolic? Asked Matthew. Well, uh, Garlinghouse, their CEO, is just speaking at the event in France. And uh, I read an article on it this morning. And uh, they are launching a stable coin. So that could be very bullish for XRP. As if like XRP wasn't the most stable crypto in the crypto sphere already, right? But uh, also, um, what was the other big news uh, coming out? Um, 
uh, there was the stable coin news and then there was something other big, but it just slipped my mind. But, uh, I, I think it has big potential. Let's not forget in 2017, it hit four bucks ish. And right now it's been suppressed since the lawsuit. That's the other thing. The lawsuit is wrapping up as soon as they pay. I know the sec wants $2 billion for a settlement. And I think it's going to go back and forth a little longer. They'll settle. And then it may have a lot of potential. We'll see. I, I'm not personally bullish on XRP because of what it represents and stands for. And it's ultimately a bridge currency to empower the CBDCs, which are central bank digital currencies. And I'm anti-CBDC, hence I am anti-XRP. So just so you know, if you don't know, now you know. Today is my fourth month anniversary of being a CNA member. Cheers to that, Yahim. Congratulations. And I could actually tell by the color of your badge. So I appreciate four straights. That's 120 days of dedication. Thank you. Someone asked a little earlier, are you a UFC fan? Yes. I love combat combat sports. I've always loved combat sports since I was like five years old, watching Mike Tyson fights with my father and my grandfather and my family growing up. So I've always loved and respected boxing and then as I got older, martial arts, and also I trained boxing, uh, not currently, but I've trained boxing when I was younger, and I also trained many years of martial arts, and martial arts will always be a part of who I am, so I personally love it. I love combat sports. Look at ARC B or R A R B, and it will go up and grow. Good stuff. Indicative, indicate, I don't know what you're saying there, indicative, did I... Did I butcher the word? Is that why you're correcting me? The Ripple IPO. Oh, yeah. The Ripple IPO is the other news. If you want it when it happens. Correct. Yeah. So, yeah. A lot going on in the crypto sphere, fam. Uh, exciting times. This is the time. The next 18 months, just pure bullishness. If history is to repeat like the previous cycles. Happy Thursday, JV. Keep up the good work. You got it, Sammy G. Respect, family. Greatly appreciate it. Welcome, Jennifer, to the stream. I like to own a lot of the coins, but I love and hodl the most in Bitcoin, says Molly. Well, that's a definitely a positive there. Uh, Bitcoin is the greatest. There will never be no second greatest. JV, what do you think about karate combat? <laughs> Honestly, I, I, I watched a clip of a bit boy fighting some other non-fighter. I think it's a mockery. I don't know. I don't know much else about it, but I've seen two non-fighters fighting and I was just scratching my head like, are people paying to watch this? That was my two Satoshis. Respect, JV. Uh, Mokan. Indica indic indic indicative. Oh, snap. Is that the word? Indicative. Did I say indicative? Yeah, okay. Indicative. Thank you, thank you, thank you. If you can't be optimistic about Bitcoin now, then forget about it. Indicative. I got it on my first try. <laughs> Live with Bitcoin and JV is more interesting. There you go. Mateus, much, much love. Love you too, says Jennifer Tamale. We appreciate the fam. This is our tribe. Respect the tribe, right? Row 2D. Welcome, welcome. Everyone just joining us, welcome. But let's dive into our next story of the day, shall we? Let's discuss the latest with uh, Uniswap versus the SEC. The SEC won't let me be, let CZ be free. But anyways, uh, Uniswap price tanks 10% as team vows to fight the SEC threat. Uniswap, the token for the decentralized exchange of the same name, sunk to a six-week low after Uniswap said it received a proposal lawsuit. A uh, proposed lawsuit notice from the U.S. regulators, which it is ready to fight. Fight. Let's go. Uni dropped 10% from $11.21 to $10 in an hour after Uni said it received the Wells notice from the SEC, a notification that the regulator is planning enforcement action. Uni is currently trading at $9.66, its lowest point since late February. And uh, quoting... Uh, dude here, uh, Hayden Adams. I am not surprised, just annoyed, disappointed, and ready to fight. Fight, let's go. Uniswap didn't share the exact contents, uh, contents of the Wells notice, but in a blog post regarding the notice, it claimed Uni wasn't a security and it doesn't meet the U.S. legal definitions of securities exchange or broker. The SEC spokesperson shared it doesn't comment on the existence or non-existence of a possible investigation. Consensus Senior Counsel and Regulatory Matter Director Bill Hughes wrote, 
clarifying that the SEC staff have to first get the lawsuit approved by the agency's five commissioners, including everyone's least favorite, Gary Gensler. Quoting him here, we all know that the chair wants to sue them, and two commissioners are not going to disagree, and two will disagree, so a suit is a foregone conclusion, but there isn't a suit yet. He urged those freaked out to take a breath and calm down, as it was extremely doubtful the SEC would target uni holders or protocol users. Former SEC Internet Enforcement Chief John Reed Stark wrote on X that a Wells notice gives the recipient an opportunity to argue why the commissioners should decline a recommended lawsuit. He said the notice to uni was not surprising and is always amazed when Wells notice recipients fight back by throwing stones at the SEC with obnoxious, insulting PR campaigns like the one Uniswap seemed to have begun. Quoting him here, any SEC lawyer will agree that responding to a Wells by berating the SEC, calling them names, is a weak, risky, and losing strategy. I just think Crypto folks are sick and tired of the SEC. Now, Stark claimed Uni was recanting a tired, anemic, old, and failed monologue by alleging the SEC is abusing its power and lambasting the SEC's anti-innovative enforcement paradigm. Expect the SEC enforcement staff to lean in and file a a robust federal complaint, which will inevitably survive the usual motion to dismiss, prevail against the typical motion for summary judgment, and win on just about every other litigated issue that follows. Now, former general counsel Gabriel Shapiro wrote that from Delphi Labs, this hunch is the SEC will win on security issues with uni, but will lose if it claims uni is a securities exchange. Now, Paul Grewal, chief legal officer of Coinbase, which is being sued by the SEC, agreed with Shapiro and wrote, if the SEC claims uni is a broker, he believes it won't be able to argue its claim. He pointed to the judge's decision last month in the SEC suit against Coinbase, which determined the SEC failed to allege Coinbase conducted brokerage activity through its decentralized Coinbase wallet. So there you have it, family. How many of you are uni holders or using the decentralized exchange? Let me know. And how do you feel this will likely play out and impact the greater crypto market? I'll let you boy. Gary Guzzler sees too many average Joes becoming rich and becomes a threat to his bank buddies. And speaking of Gensler, what does that smell like? It smells like securities, if you know what I mean. Too many frogs and scam. Uh, These clowns trying to take us down. What a guy. Wow, what a guy. Wow, what a guy. Do, 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 do. Hey, JVD, thinks Satoshi believes the number 42 is the meaning of life? Man, clue me in. I don't understand that. Uh, if so, why would he only create 21 million? Tell me the significance of 42, so I never heard that. I wouldn't know, so you got to clue me in. <laughs> Smells like securities. And let me just say, guess who's back, 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 back again. Gary's back. <laughs> Tell a friend a mercy received. Yes, you will see big support for the Uniswap. So the SEC is protecting me. <laughs> this is just a slow crypto down to trade five to further get the grip on. Uniswap is just code and software, smoke and mirrors. Agreed. Agreed. A JV is Gensler around by any chance. I'm just, I'm just. Gary's back. back. Uh, I, I, Tell a friend. Guess who's back. Guess who's back. Guess who's back. I did my part to oppose Gary. Bought a bunch of uni today. Nice, Steve. Love it, JV. Thank you, Molly. This is a bullish trigger for Bitcoin, as only Bitcoin and memes cannot be sued. Guess who's back? Guess who's back? Not if Gary can help it. Guess who's back? Guess who's back? Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy. 42 is the meaning of life. Oh, wow. I got to look that up. I haven't heard that one. Now, I'm familiar with like sacred geometry, flower of life, this type of stuff. All right. Yeah, I mean, vibration, everything's vibration. And we all know numbers are very powerful. So I'm going to look that one up. A quantum computer gave 42 an answer to that. Whoa. Uh, I've created some guidelines. Where? all of my overlords told me to stop crypto shops. They got bigger. Uh-oh. You want help? Well, this is what I'll uh, give you. What are you going to give us? Come on, Gary. Tell us. A little middle finger mixed with the lost hey. tooth. They must have forgot who I am, what I'm up to. Yeah. There we go. 432. 
HZ. Now, HZ, not megahertz because it's not MZ. So what's the H stand for there? Clue me in, clue me in. A quantum computer gave 42 as the answer to that. Oh, Hertz must be Hertz, HZ. Wrong, stop oh, debating. Very clear. Back to stop operating. Everybody go back to the job you're hating. Come on, Gary. Break it down, Gary. It's Luna FTX LCS2. Oh, but my only job is protecting you. Woo! There we go. 432 Hertz in music. Thank you, thank you. Darth, what it do? It's good to see y'all too. Hertz, thank you, Jennifer. So the SCC's protecting me. He said CZ free, please let him be. Set CZ free, just let him be. Come on, you guys already took 4.2 billion from the man. <laughs> U.S. can't default and it's debt to U.S. can never pay it back. What's left? Money printer. You already know precisely what's going to happen. No, 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 no. W is time for the next membership. Nice song, JV. Let's go. I just bought some C swap on Uni. Let's see what happens. Just don't have a wallet to drop it in yet. Gary, the great protector. <laughs> and Mateus comes through with another gifted membership. So congratulations, Crypto Colon. You've been blessed with the MicroStrategy membership of the channel. And Mateus, thank you. I think that's three or so memberships you're already gifted on today's show. Respect. Everyone show Mateus some love. And guys, get the likes up and we may get some more gifts in the building. That seems to be how we roll. Back to the original question. Do you think there will be another 21 million sleeper Bitcoin unlocks? but only after the 42nd having? No. I don't think I fully understand the question, but I'm still saying no. I don't know. We're here, JV. Shout out Shaton Patel. Gracias. Thank you, guys. Anyways, next story of the day, eh? Let's discuss a uh, billionaire venture capitalist Tim Draper projects quarter million bitty this year, 2024, then the latest from Rich Dad, Robert Kiyosaki uh, agreeing uh, with Kathy Wood's 2.3 million uh, projection for the king. Uh, so let's break this baby down. Shout out uh, Tim Draper. The renowned venture capitalist Draper sees Bitcoin tripling in value in 2024. Let's do a little triple action, shall we? Due to the inflows into the spot ETFs and looming Bitcoin halving. Uh, that's right. Draper reiterated his belief that Bitcoin would drastically increase in value, considering several factors in 2024. Quoting him from recent speaking at Paris Blockchain Week, if I had to predict, maybe we can see 250,000 by the end of the year. I mean, it's looking pretty good, Draper said and reflected on his previous price prediction for 2022. And to watch the actual interview from Paris Week with Draper making the prediction, check the show notes below the video in the description. But now for the highlights. The approval of the spot Bitcoin test in the US has been a critical driver of renewed interest and capital inflows into the Bitcoin ecosystem. Draper believes the investment products have opened up a new avenue for Bitcoin curious investors that might be daunted by the process prospect of holding Bitcoin in self-custody and also serve as a hedge against devaluing fiat currencies. Quoting him here, I think that it gives people an opportunity to buy some Bitcoin and hold on to it so that they can take care of themselves when there is a run on the dollar or the euro. He also highlighted the appeal for investors who want their respective fund managers to continue managing their portfolios. Access to a Bitcoin ETF allows investors to continue working with Fidelity or JP Morgan Boo! And have this new asset class managed as part of their wider investments. So that's right. I mean, Draper's been calling for a quarter million Bitcoin for a while, as we've been covering. Draper said the Bitcoin's finite supply and increasing adoption as a payment option for goods or services could or would increase its appeal to the masses. At the same time, fiat currencies grapple with inflation and decreased purchasing power. That's a nice way to put it. Yeah, the fiat's just grappling with inflation as if it's in the UFC, right? <laughs> I don't really need to hold on to any fiat currencies that decreases in value over time because of political whims or government spending or politicians that just decide they're going to spend more money and inflate your money. Well said, Draper. The venture capitalist investor added that Bitcoin remains a place of great security against inflation. Quitting them here. I think I've actually started to see the lines cross. People feel more comfortable with their Bitcoin than they do 
with their dollars. Man, I felt this way since I got into Bitcoin in 2017. How can you feel any other way, right? The fourth Bitcoin halving is also set to have a significant impact on market dynamics. A quick shout out to Andy Markowitz. I appreciate the super. Thanks for sending your first super ever live and on stream. Respect. The event earmarked for April 20th is one that investors should not underestimate. Quitting them again. If you're an investor in the stock market, they say don't bet against the Fed. If you're a Bitcoin buyer, don't bet against the halving. It changes everything. The supply shrinks, the demand increases, and the numbers go up. That's natural economics, supply and demand. The venture capitalist also reiterated his belief that having single-digit percentage exposure to Bitcoin is becoming a more attractive means of hedging against rising concerns over bank failures and devaluing sovereign currencies. Very well said. Let's not forget. Remember last year, Q1 of the Bitcoin market was driven off of the regional banking crisis. And none of that has been fixed. There's still a banking crisis. A lot of people are losing hope and uh, for their banking institutions, of course. Now, what would happen if that would happen uh, to the masses? There would be a bank run and they'd all want their money and the money wouldn't exist right? And then what happens? Do you receive any money back if you're FDIC insured, but the Fed is poor? Like Michael Saylor says, those who save in fiat currencies are poor. Is that what the Fed is doing? But anyways, I digress. Let me know your thoughts with that family and with his quarter million prediction for this year, 2020 foe, holla. Need a Peter Schiff song too. We sure do. Little Bubble, I'm sure he probably has one. We just need to download it. I think too low, JC, too much being pushed out in the media. Well, uh, hmm, I'm not sure what that reference was to. Looking at the rising wedge in the monthly and the yearly, at least as it could be. I was being conservative. Crypto Today, uh, you and your super awesome. You guys are awesome. Uh, Pabrasito, I don't even know what that means. Pabrasitos. Pabrasitos says Menendez. Uh, cheers. <laughs> yeah, yo. So, yeah. Bitcoin going to zero. Oh, that's the track we uh, we watched yesterday on Rumble. That's the new Jammy Jam he just dropped. Shit out little bubble on that one. Bitcoin going to zero. Get the f out. Go F yourself, pretty much. Now, <laughs> we witness one or several central banking crises. Precisely. People, people, people that use... Currency. What do we call them, folks? We call them poor. We call them poor. Pretty much. Bitcoin is the hardest pure form of money ever invented. Oh, thank you for that, KJM. So, Pop Arcitos means poor things. Aw. Peter Schiff's song, The Doors, This is the End. <laughs> Greg. Does Grayscale have a time limit to pay their fines? I'm, I don't know. It's a good question. I'm not sure. You got that right. We call them poor. I drive in a Fiat 500. End of year prediction for me is 225. That was what I was being conservative about. I dig it, Jennifer. 225 sounds good to me. If you guys want to see a 200,000 plus bitty this year in 2024, let me know. Let's get it. Fiat idiots, says Grand Buck. Gold all-time high, <laughs> 2377. Sounds about right. Betting some alts on this card. It's like playing bingo. Bingo. F Fiat idiots, very stupid, says KJM. Yeah, man. Crazy, crazy, crazy. Animated decisions, welcome fam. Goldsberry, welcome. Betting some alts. Pretty much what it is. Uh, bidding or Bitcoin to 55 G's after the halving. Really? You think we have that much of a correction after the halving? Okay. Anyone else uh, believe that? Let me know. You think we can correct sub 60? I think 60 has established itself as the new 20, just like 20 was the previous all time high of 2017. Then we hit 69. I feel like we're pretty strong where we're at. I can be wrong, but just my uh, two Satoshis, I think we're sitting strong right now heading into the halving. 1980 dudes with blue pills. <laughs> I could buy a Mercedes, but love my little Fiat 500. Right on. Smart. The Mercedes is not going up in value. 
Uh, volatile French philosopher, circa 1720, all fiat eventually always returns to its intrinsic value. Zero. Facts. Well said, Greg. Well said. 60,000 is not a correction. Think about 3040. Ooh. Yeah, I can't see that. Not considering the previous all time high was 69. We're basically $1,000 on top of the previous 2021 all time high. That means this bull market. It's just getting started. You ain't seen ish yet. You know I mean, I have dry powder for the post having dip. 58,990 says the gold forecast. I drive a WRX with a headlight LED bulb out. Smart man. Who needs LEDs? Uh, 63 and 67 is now a strong support. There you go. That's what I was saying. Uh, pump it up. Don't you know pump it up? I actually know all about that. Pump it up. Don't you know pump it up? You've got to pump it up. Precisely. Is Mr. 100 going to allow it? No. Is Sailor going to allow it? No. Is Bukele going to allow it? No. Bro, I was born in the early 80s and didn't need them blue pills. Sounds like a kitty being a hater. Grow up, little one. <laughs> 180, end of the 2024 minimum. With all the catalysts that are going on, I just see the price going up. I see the same, Jennifer. My formula works for the previous three, says Gold. Uh, what is that? Seminem, say pump it, huh? Seminem, Seminem, Eminem, Seminem. Saving for a correction too. <laughs> Seize the moment. Just remember, the corrections are shorter and shorter to live and will continue to be that way when we're in the bull season. Overheard two women talking about how the printing of the money means they have more money and it will fix everything. It can't fix stupid, so I just walked on. <laughs> Yeah, we'll fix everything. They'll just print more money. That's the answer. That's most women's, uh, you know, solution to everything. And we'll just more money. will solve the problem. We we'll just print more money. Yeah, what can go wrong? Love the head, Bob. <laughs> Boomers, Papo, meant gold buyers in 1980. Hello from Prague. Love your videos. Bitcoin to the moon. Shout out, Hellmark. Appreciate it. But anyways, family, now for our feature story of the day. Let's discuss the latest from Rich Dad, Robert Kiyosaki, uniting with Kathy Wood's 2.3 million Bitcoin price forecast. Let's break this baby down, shall we? And welcome everyone just joining the stream. Greatly appreciate your support. Famous acclaimed author and investor, Robert Kiyosaki, publicly endorsed Kathy Wood's ARK Invest audacious prediction on Bitcoin, demonstrating a noteworthy agreement of viewpoints towards the potential of the crypto asset to reach unprecedented heights. In fact, let's just read the tweet from Kiyosaki himself. He posted this April 10th, which was yesterday, very late at 11.36 p.m. It already got almost a million views. And I retweeted it myself. Um, actually did it with a quote. But anyways, he wrote, uh, Kathy Wood, I think he means guarantees here, not quarantees, but nonetheless, guarantees Bitcoin will hit 2.3 million per biddy. Do I believe her? Yes, I do. All hail Kathy Wood. In fact, is Kathy spelt with a K or a C? I asked you guys. Let me know. Uh, Kathy Wood is very smart. I trust her opinion. Could she be wrong? Yes, she could be. So what? The more important question is, what do you believe? What if Kathy is right? What if Kathy is wrong? And most importantly, how many Bitcoin do you own? That's the most important question, fam. Now, if Kathy is right, I will wish I bought more. If she is wrong, I will be glad to own zero. Most people will own zero regardless if Kathy is right or wrong. School is the only place on earth where smart people are people who never make mistakes. <laughs> so the real world, the richest and happiest people are people who make mistakes and learn from their mistakes. God bless Kathy Wood for her courage to make mistakes and learn from her mistakes. I too believe the Bitcoin will reach 2.3 million. Now I want to stop there. She's also predicted more recently, I covered on the pod, Bitcoin could go as high as $3.8 million per coin by 2030. Let me know your thoughts on that. So this is more of the modest uh, take here, 2.3 million. He also says, take care. I suggest live dangerously. If you can afford, what is that? Zero one Bitcoin. Regardless if Kathy is right or wrong, you'll be better educated, smarter, wiser than it comes to Bitcoin. School is the only place on earth where the smart people are people. Now, very interesting there. Uh, let me know your thoughts with uh, some of that. And I'm going to continue with the story. This unity is evidence of the increasing number of people in the financial community who are confident that the asset has the potential to be a game changer with exponential growth. 
Amen. Now, in February, a report titled Big Ideas 2024, ARK made an intriguing projection that might have a significant effect on the crypto market, especially Bitcoin. The research examines multiple scenarios and pro uh, projects the possible price movements of Bitcoin depending upon the varying global asset allocation degrees. Specifically, their analysis suggests that investment of more than 19% of the world's assets valued at a whopping $250 trillion into Bitcoin may cause it to soar to an all-time high of $2.3 million per coin. Now, it is worth noting that the firm considers that the asset as a trustworthy risk-off asset that is often viewed as a haven during times of market turbulence. And starting off, Rich Dad highlighted his confidence in the bold prediction and said that this is because he believes the firm's chief executive officer, Kathy Wood, with a C is the proper uh, spelling, just FYI, is incredibly intelligent and her judgment is reliable. And although he noted that Wood's forecast could be wrong, the crucial question here is what people in the community believe. However, amidst speculations about whether she could be right or wrong, the most important perspective to consider is how much Bitcoin an individual holds. Should Kathy Wood's projections prove to be correct, Rich Dad asserts he will regret uh, re will regret not acquiring more Bitcoin over time. And on the other hand, if she turns out to be wrong, he'll be happy not to have owned any. Now, that's interesting. We've heard uh, Kiyosaki proclaim he, he holds 66 Bitcoin, and a few weeks ago, he announced he was going to buy 10 more. So if he did follow through with what he said he was going to do, that would mean he currently holds roughly 76 biddies. Now, even though Wood's claims might be correct or not, Rich Dad underscored ignorance within the crypto space, saying that the majority of the people will still possess zero Bitcoin. Well, that's a given. Not everyone could own a Bitcoin. School is the only place on earth where the smart people are people who never make the mistakes, he said. And according to Rich Dad, those who make mistakes and grow from them are the wealthiest and happiest persons in the real world. Now, so far, Kiyosaki commended the CEO for possessing the courage to make errors and learn from them, affirming that he also believes the Bitcoin will reach 2.3 million per coin, in the future. Now, aside from backing Wood's viewpoints, Kiyosaki is a supporter of the largest crypto asset, which we all know, Bitcoin. Kiyosaki has been constantly advocating Bitcoin, urging the crypto community to invest in the coin rather than in fiat currencies, which usually he labels fake money. That's because fiat currencies are fake money backed by nothing. But anyways, the acclaimed author also made several bullish price targets for Bitcoin this year, projecting the impending halving event expected to take place in one week will cause Bitcoin to spike to 100,000 per coin by September. Let me know if you agree with that. Additionally, he claims the Bitcoin might peak at the $300,000 threshold before the end of the year. Can you see a $300,000 Bitcoin taking place this year, family? That's even more bullish than Tim Draper's uh, quarter million price prediction. Let me know your thoughts. And again, what do you feel regarding him uh, doubling down on Kathy Wood's 2.3 million price prediction? Holla at your boy. I feel very conservative target, very doable. The million dollar question is really when will it happen? I think Bitcoin's going to hit all the targets that have come before it, right? From 100,000 to 250 to a half a milli to, you know what I mean, three quarters of a million to 1 million to 2 million to 3.8 million and everything in between. It's just a matter of time. What are your thoughts though, family? Please do let me know. Uh, Tim Draper, we've been covering his predictions for quite some time as well. He's been calling for a quarter million Bitcoin. He had He's an early investor. He got in in like 2014. I think there was like a Silk Road auction and he purchased like a vast amount of Bitcoin, very discounted. And his investment clearly has been doing quite well. So you got to respect uh, Tim Draper as well. Clearly, they're both bullish. Uh, Kiyosaki, he's also bullish on gold and silver. Personally, I don't understand why. If you understand Bitcoin, why are you even still so much bullish on gold and silver, right? But then again, he's been proclaiming his bullishness for gold and silver for decades, right? My first book I've read from Rich Dad was back in the day. I was a young adult. It was called Rich Dad, Poor Dad. How many of you had read uh, that book? Another book I recall reading from him as a young adult was Why We Want You to Be Rich. And that was actually a book he co-wrote with Donald Trump. 
way before he became the president, right? That was an interesting read um, as well. Some of my other favorite books that helped me think differently, you know, growing up outside of the box in, in attaining and attracting and manifesting wealth is Rich Dad, uh, no, I just said that one, uh, is um, The Science of Getting Rich by, I think it was Wallace Waddles, correct me if I'm wrong. That was a good book. And also my all-time favorite um uh, What's it called? I don't know why it slipped my mind here. But the one from Napoleon Hill, Think and Grow Rich. I've read Think and Grow Rich numerous times, right? And uh, it's a very interesting read. And he, Napoleon Hill has another book he wrote later on, uh, you know, before he passed. It was something like Outwitting the Devil or something like that. That's a good classic as well. But anyways, family, um, let me know if you agree or disagree with some of these predictions. Can you see Bitcoin realistically smashing 100 to 300,000 for this year, 2024? When do you feel the cycle peak will likely be? And for the big question, when do we hit a million dollars? When will Bitcoin realistically smash 1 million per BTC? Holla at your boy. And I'm going to read as many of these comments out loud as I can. Think and grow rich also at 14. Right on. Great classic family. Bath water to the moon. I've read that book. I don't really care what the top of the cycle is holding a lot longer than one cycle. Amen to that. You're supposed to read books. Yeah. Well, you can also uh, listen to the audio book. Don't get it twisted. Nowadays, virtually nobody read books. I personally prefer the book because it gets me off of my mobile device. It gets me off of the device. I have too many hours on my device doing my podcast. So if I have the opportunity to read a book, I can just hold something that's not a device with no EMF. That's a win for JV. However, let's not get it twisted. Audio books are the most convenient way to download information. Like I just hop in the sauna and you can just play an audio book and listen to whatever you want and download the book into the unconscious mind. Another thing you can do is listen to the book while you're sleeping. I don't know how many times I fell asleep listening to the audiobook version of Think and Grow Rich or Rich Dad, Poor Dad and all of these types of classics. Program the unconscious mind because it's the unconscious mind or subconscious, whatever you want to refer to it as, that is in the driver's seat. You know what I mean? The powers that be know this and that's why they have all this propaganda and FUD on the news, they figure if we just keep repeating the same BS over and over, the subconscious mind will accept it as fact. And that's what they use against you. That's how they weaponize the news against you, right? They just keep repeating something that's false and they figure, well, if we say it enough, they'll just believe it to be true. And that's how the uh, subconscious works. JV agree, I do love audiobooks. That's what's up, Devon, smart. Who knew? Thought they were supposed to sit on the shelf. <laughs> no one ever reads them. So hard to make that joke, right? People listen to the audiobooks now, fam, pretty much. Uh, One million by 2025. Send it. I dig it, Molly. Robert said, don't let anyone steal your cheese. I dig it. Don't let anyone steal your cheese. Do we talk about the current purchasing power? It might be straightforward to calculate Bitcoin, but it is more difficult with the monetary debasement. BS says, end of the year, 120, 150. Word. <laughs> yeah, man. I don't really care the top of the cycle holding it longer. Exactly. I hope Kathy Wood is right. I am set to retire in 2030. Well, that'd be a nice one. Amen to that. I'm holding and owning books still. Yeah, I have all my books at my mom's house. Uh, back in Clearwater, before I moved to Puerto Rico, I had a bookshelf with all the books I bought growing up. I used to be heavily into books as a young man, and I saved all my books. I never sold them. So they're sitting now in a box in my mom's uh, garage. I don't know why, but it just reminded me of that. Sarcasm, what's that? Exactly. I see one million in the current purchasing power of February 2029. I had to be sarcastic, says Jennifer. Shout out for Earl Ferris Fox for having a cool username. Uh, principles of dealing with the changing world order. Uh, Ray Dalio. Word. Uh, we need JV's list of books in the description. I like hodling and owning books still. One of my favorite books, non-related to like, I mean, wealth and anything, just manif more manifestation, law of attraction is going to be The Alchemist. Paul, uh, I think it's Paulo Coelho. That was a very uh, good read. It was a long ass time ago I read it, but it was very influential. And then I started using alchemist and alchemy in all my brands, right? I had shred alchemy, my fitness thing. Um, I used to host events, lifestyle alchemy. 
I like using that word because an alchemist is someone who can create something out of nothing. So theoretically, we're all alchemists because we all have that power. It all starts with the thought and then eventually becomes manifested into reality. Richest Man in Babylon, a nice read. Uh, thanks for the recommendation. I have uh, been a various, oh, voracious reader. Nice. Since I was a kid, I'm not surprised. Smart people typically are. Listen to The Richest Man in Babylon. Um, I like turning pages. I listen to The Hardy Boys while I sleep. I don't have no clue who The Hardy Boys are, but my library was in the east wing of the house. I love reading and learning daily, but I know it's not a normality, so I had to joke about the reading. All good dankness. All good broski. Uh, Atlas Shrugged and the Fountain Head. Thanks for the recommendation there, Greg. The Richest Man in Babylon is great. Yes, that is a good one as well. Do you own Alchemy Pat? No, I don't even know what that is, Alchemy Pat. No. Mm -mm. And my previous uh, company had Alchemy in it as well, like my LLC, but my new one don't have it in it. The sense of being stared at, born to run. Alchemy, Alchemit, Ancient Egypt. Thank you. I have a great grandmother, old encyclopedias. Oh, wow. That's crazy. Manifesting your future is possible. I've been able to achieve it. Facts, K Jam. A lot of people don't recognize that. And some of these books can help us understand the power we already have, right? We're basically created in God's image. So we're co-creators or creators, whatever we want to define us as. And we have the power to manifest and create anything we can think of. We can manifest and create into reality. If you truly believe and take action upon that, there's a formula, a 60s book for school kids with fun with Dick and Jane. Couldn't release that now. Uh. Oh, man, I really enjoy reading Fam's comments. I know. Forbidden Knowledge, JV, Billy Carson. Uh, thank you, K-Jam. Good stuff, yo. I know the Jerky Boys. I don't know the Hardy Boys. I grew up on the Jerkies. Classics. I love me some comedy, by the way. Uh, who are your favorite comedians? For me, rest in peace, George Carlin. He takes the throne. I grew up watching him. My father put me on to George Carlin when I was a kid. And uh, we watch all his specials together. It brings back a lot of memories. Rest in peace, Mr. Carlin. And of course, I'm going to have to throw out there Chappelle and Cat Williams. I, I guess that's my, that's my, my three, the Holy Trinity. Murphy, Raw, oh my God. I was just a kid, so I don't think I was able to listen to that because I was probably five years old, but as I got older and like, wow, I can't believe they're, they can pretty much talk about anything in comedy and stand up back in the day. Now, I'm not so sure. <laughs> Bernard Manning, where, yeah, Jerky Boys were classic, yo. It's Kistel. Hi, it's the Fat Muffin Man. Frank Rizzo, R-I-Z-Z-O, open your ears. Yeah, classics. Uh, numbers go up. People are starting to comment unfamiliar to them, so they start to cause your unique feel empowered and not humiliated. Word. Good times. Monty. Raw was hilarious. Yeah, Richard Pryor, the OG. Exactly. Steve Martin, George Carlin, Stephen Wright. Another was, uh, what's his name, that passed. Uh, Robin Williams was fantastic, especially his stand-up. Uh, Buck Woke. Wokeness has destroyed comedy, yeah, unfortunately. There is some newer animated uh, prank called Jokesters on YouTube. <laughs> it's not the same. The Jerkies were, I guess they were the first to do it on a grand scale, right? I used to have all their albums. George Carlin specials hit different nowadays. Crazy how right on the nose he had it. I know, yo. The only one thing I disagreed with Carlin, you know, he didn't believe in God. That was one thing I always believed in, disagreed with him. But as far as the comedy is concerned, spot on. Yeah, Robin Williams was great. The animation makes it funny though, right? 
Nikki Glazer interview with Natalie Burnell today is must see. Thanks for the recommendation. Shout out Coin Stories. I know that's Natalie's pod. Total Money Makeover by Dave Ramsey. <laughs> Use that to get out of debt with three years, including paying off the house. Now, you mentioned the word Dave Ramsey. I just know he was one of the, uh, he was bashing Bitcoin back when uh, Max was trying to get him in. Love Carlin and Eddie Murphy. Nice classics fam. I used to go to the comedy store in Holly. Oh, I hear so many stories of the comedy store. I wish I got to go there in Hollywood quite often in the early 80s. Total money made over right on. Woke has destroyed some more than just comedy it's ruined life and people real talk there you're amazing and life is beautiful amazing life cheers to that laurel and hardy says quiet man is that like a comedy skit i'm not familiar with where's the real gordon rams oh man gordon ramsey's man he's hilarious gordon you're an idiot sandwich say it i'm an idiot sandwich <laughs> carlin might believe it now well, yeah, maybe now that he's not here. Hmm. Uh, Andrew Dice Clay. <laughs> yeah, Clay was hilarious. Yeah, Clay was hilarious. I uh, appreciated the episodes in Entourage where they brought Clay in as well, and he was working on that series with Johnny Drama. <laughs> yeah, little Bo Peep. Uh, Bill Burr on women. Bill Burr is hilarious. He is a funny guy. Omni Man Ether, Mark, oh my God, JV. Only fans for dummies? Is that a thing? Comedy, anything Kramer says. <laughs> Drove to Texas nonstop listening to the Jerky Boys all the way. Good stuff, man. 1930s Clint Eastwood dad. Oh, word. Who is Clint Eastwood's dad? I didn't know. Or is that like a, a skit or something? I used to also, uh, back in the day, I'm not a fan anymore. I'll be clear. I don't agree with a lot of his shenanigans. But back in the day, I used to listen to a lot of Howard Stern. And my favorite part of his show was always the, like, the Beetlejuice, Hank the Dwarf, and all the crazies that he made famous, right? Johnny Bananas, that's, <laughs> that's the one, yo. They bring dice with Johnny Drama, Johnny Bananas. <laughs> Viking Quest. Victory! That was one of my favorite shows growing up. Uh, Entourage. Hilarious. Uh, yeah. Ari was pretty hilarious, too. Ari Gold. Lloyd! Beetlejuice 2 is coming out. Like a real Beetlejuice? No, I, I, I mean, I like Beetlejuice, not the movie, but Beetlejuice, the character from Howard Stern <laughs> that looked like a real-life Beetlejuice. He's hilarious. Carlin, Richard Pryor has the heart attack. I have a heart attack. RP, another heart attack. I have another heart attack. Richard burns his face off. Good Lord. Love and light all. Love and light, Jay Ford. Appreciate you. Abbott and Costello, you're going way back. Way back. Early Howard Stern was awesome. Yeah. I agree. Ari was the best part in drama. Yeah, the two funniest, definitely drama and Ari. You always get a kick out of those two. Rodney Dangerfield. No respect. Uh, you got to respect Dangerfield because he came into the he came on the comedy scene like very late and became very famous. So very hard to do. I used to also when I first got satellite radio as a young man. I think it was serious uh, before they merged with I think it was XM or whatever the other satellite radio was. Um, they had some of the, like the comedy channels and I would just drive when I was a real estate appraiser, I'd either be listening to the Howard Stern show or, uh, just the comedy skits and with people doing stand up. I love stand up comedy. Look out for Albert, uh, Dupontel. Okay. Abbott and Costello who were the first, <laughs> who's on first. Uh, I stood up in line for an autograph on my book from Stern. Nice. You got the auto, the auto. Beetlejuice appears to be a bright orange red star in the upper left shoulder of the constellation Orion. Oh, that is interesting. Because Sirius, S-I-R-U-S also, right? Major star constellation or whatever in which the satellite radio was named after. R.I.P. George Carlin, rest in peace. Please watch Bro Selecta when you have time. 
cool. Is that comedy? Quiet Man, I haven't heard of it. Uh, Sirius XM Radio is free. Just sign up for the trial with a credit card with a dollar balance. Nice. <laughs> uh, JV, love listening to comedy when I am driving on Spotify. Nice. That's awesome, Devon. Yeah, sometimes music gets old and you got to switch it up. Comedy keeps it, uh, keeps things entertaining. Are you not entertained? Beetlejuice 2 is coming out with the real Beetlejuice, Michael Keaton. Oh, wow. I remember that show as a kid. It was always kind of creepy, but nonetheless, I think it was uh, Bert. Uh, who was the producer of that? Burton? He always made kind of dark, creepy films. Andrew Schultz podcast had Anthony Pompliano on it a while back. Great watch. Yeah, I tune into the Schultz podcast from time to time when I see guests I like. So shout out Pomp and uh, Andrew Schultz. I enjoyed Schultz's recent uh, interview on uh, the Rogan podcast was good too. Supernova incoming. Let's go. Jam on the Sirius FM. It's a great channel if it is still there. <laughs> Hitch Hedberg or Mitch. Yeah, he's funny. He's pretty funny. Rodney Dangerfield, back to school. I walk around Sydney with Scottish comedian Billy Connolly and he was lost and I was a foot carrier for the stockbroker when he was 17. It was cool as what? Nice. JB, what's the second best again? Which one's the best crypto asset? Well, Bitcoin's the best crypto asset. Okay. What's the second best? There is no second best. There you go. Burton and Dammy F men. Speaking of music, tomorrow is the first day of the week for Coachella. Is Coachella still a thing? Uh, who, who are some of the artists who are going to be at Coachella this year? Let, let me know. Let me know. Anyways, fam, here's what we're going to do. We've been streaming going on 90 minutes, so we're going to continue with the uncensored version of the pod on Rumble. But make a note, tomorrow we back too early. Uh, so no more 4 p.m. Tomorrow it's going to be probably 12 p.m. Eastern, just FYI. So I got to pick up my daughter from school. So starting tomorrow for the whole next week, we're going to be early 12 p.m. Eastern ish versus 4 p.m. Just note, then the following week, we switch back to 4 p.m. If you haven't noticed, that's been the uh, the schedule. Love JV sense of humor. Greatly appreciated, Molly. Uh, good stuff. This is Peter Schiff's mom is the second best. That's funny. Oh my God. Kiyosaki is a great in property, not great in crypto, self-proclaimed billionaire with only 30-ish Bitcoin is a joke. That is kind of funny, right? I would expect uh, Kiyosaki to have thousands of Bitcoins, but teach their own. At least he has something. 66, not too shabby, or 76 now if he followed through with his word and bought another 10 biddies. But anyways, fam, let's continue with the uncensored version of the pod exclusively on Rumble. It's rumble.cryptonewsalerts dot net again rumble dot crypto newsletters dot net and i'll see you there we're going to speak censorship free let's go baby peace i right, youtube stream is officially over we're going to continue with the rumble